The object of this film is to show that a landing on a forbidding coast and in rough weather is not only practicable, but definitely an operation of war for specially trained troops. Cliffs and ocean form a barrier which is normally left to defend itself, giving great opportunity for surprise to a force which can make use of it. This exercise is an experiment in rough weather landings under difficult conditions. The landing is the opening phase of larger operations. It is made in daylight for demonstration purposes only. Here's a stretch of the Cornish coast exposed to the Atlantic swell. A practicable beach and beach exit exist here. But it's heavily defended and mined. Further west, a light force might land in this cove which is defended by a few machine guns. Beyond is a stretch of barren cliff, inland from which is a small coast defense battery. The plan evolved is first to put a small force ashore in this area, the approach being made in darkness and the touchdown just after first light. The tasks of this force are one, to destroy the battery, and two, to take the defenses of the cove from the rear, clear beach mines, and form a bridgehead. This will allow stronger forces to land and make for the main landing beach, repeating on a larger scale the same operation of rear attack. The whole operation takes the form of a progressive bridgehead. It's significant that this area in general character is not unlike stretches of the coast of Brittany. The only craft available for this exercise was the FBE-3, but being flat-bottomed and punt-ended, it is entirely unsuitable. A good type for this operation would be the LCPM, adapted from the Yorkshire cobble and power-driven with high, sturdy bows, or else the power dory. There's a sizable swell running, but that's no exception on Atlantic coastlines. As we near the objective, the craft are assembled. Paddles, kedge anchors and gear are checked over. The landing area is reached. The tower on the skyline there marks the battery position. The first flight prepares to launch. Paddling causes undue fatigue, which would be eliminated by the use of power. The second flight follows. initial landing, craft must be sacrificed, and re-embarkation is not considered. This boat's kedge anchor dragged, throwing the craft out of control.
men on the rocks are from the first party ashore and stand by to help in subsequent craft. Further up, another boat touches down. Last of all, the support weapons come ashore. Where the cliffs are too steep, the heavy loads are hauled up. The three-inch mortar and Vickers machine gun. bombs and ammunition. The leading elements reach the cliff top. Support weapons follow. Surprise has been gained. Positions are taken up for the attack. for attack. As prearranged, a left flanking movement up the ridge takes place with supporting fire frontally and smoke cover from the mortars. The assault goes in. As soon as the position is overrun, sappers get busy. In the words of the Prime Minister, amphibious operations of peculiar complexity and hazard on a large scale are now approaching.